Oh, praise the Lord, if you will. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10. And uh, if you remember, last week we were in Deuteronomy chapter 10. And uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law. And oh, uh, they crossed the Red Sea. Moses led the children across the Red Sea. They parted that Red Sea, the Lord did. And uh, wow, the Egyptian army uh, were destroyed by the waters of the Red Sea. Next thing you know, they get into the wilderness there, and in the wilderness, they were hungry. God gave them food. They were thirsty. God gave them water. Uh, God instructed them. God, um, uh, Moses met uh, God on Mount Sinai, and God gave him instructions. Now, the children of Israel weren't meant to wander in the wilderness. They were meant to go in the promised land, but they disobeyed God. They had unbelief. They didn't enter into that land filled with milk and honey, and they wandered for 40 years. At the end of 40 years, Moses gathered the children of Israel together, and he gave them the law again. He gave them the second giving of the law. For example, uh, the Ten Commandments. They're listed in the book of Exodus chapter 20, and then we have the Ten Commandments also listed in Deuteronomy chapter 5. And uh, praise the Lord for that. So this second giving of the law, the children of Israel are about to enter into the promised land. We get to Deuteronomy chapter 10. This is a review from last week. And we get to verses 12 all the way to verse number 22. Moses gathers the children of Israel and he begins to, to talk about how great God is, how powerful God is. And by the way, he reminds them that God requires a few things. But he begins to talk about how God is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God. Uh, he's a God who created the heaven and the earth and all that. Then remember when we flip to chapter 11, uh, because of how great God is, there were three things that we were to do. And the third one last week was to hide God's word in our heart or memorize scripture. So we're going to read this portion of scripture again here in Deuteronomy chapter 10. If you can stand with me for the reading of God's word. We're going to read from verse 12 through verse 22. And uh, I'll read verse 12, and we'll read every other verse. Here we go. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to what? Love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord, and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord, Lord's thy God, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God. He hath done for thee and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Now if you look at this next chapter, chapter 11, and it'll say there in the first verse, Therefore... What does it say? Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. You see that first one, therefore love God. By the way, that's a good commandment, love God. If you go to verse number eight, it says, therefore shall you keep all the commandments. You ought to love God and also you ought to keep his commandments. And then remember last week we looked at verse number 18, Therefore shall ye lay up these words, uh, these my words, in your heart and in your soul. And you, you see that therefore love God, therefore keep his commandments, therefore hide God's word in your heart. It's a three-point outline, praise God. And we looked at hiding God's word in our heart, but I, I thought that it would be important for us to think about that first one. 
to love God. And, and we, we hear about how God loves us, and God does. And we, we're supposed to love God. By the way, that's the first commandment with promise. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. And the importance of loving God. And by the way, the love of God, us loving God, yes, is found throughout the Bible. Yes, and I want to do an, uh, sort of a, a little bit more of an in-depth study on the love of God and how we ought to love Him. And in the end, there is a test. By the way, there's a test in the Bible uh, for you and me to take. It's really interesting. When you get there, I, I noticed it. And uh, I look at that test, it's a very convicting test, but it's uh, the love test. And there's a test in the Bible, and, and you'll read it, we'll read it at the end, and that test, when you read it, will show whether you actually do love God. Because through this whole thing, we're going to say, amen, we ought to love God, uh, we ought to love God, we ought to love God, and we'll all agree with that, and then all of a sudden we get to the last part where we take the love test, and ugh, it gets very convicting. And so before we go any farther... Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We do love you. And that's why we're here, Lord. And uh, we find that theme, the love of you, throughout your word, Lord. And you, you, you had Moses remind your people to love you. And we're reminded in the New Testament to love you. We're reminded in the Psalms to love you. And it's just a, a common thread. And then when we get to that New Testament and you give us that portion of Scripture... Uh, that gives us sort of a test on do we really love you. God, I pray that you help us to stop, really assess our hearts and our minds and see if we do love you, Lord. Yes. And Lord, I pray that you help us to be a church filled with families and individuals that love you. Yes. Please bless in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Oh, uh, man, God's been good. Woo! Uh, he has been good. He's the God of heaven. He's the God of the earth. He is the Lord of lords. He's the God of gods. He's a powerful God, a mighty God. He's done mighty works in the past. By the way, he's going to do some mighty works in the future. Uh, Moses is rallying the troops. You can almost see a twinkle in his eyes. He's going to die. He's not going to get to go into the promised land, but there's those people right there. They're going to get to go in, and he's rallying the troops. He's saying, hey, listen, our God is worth serving. Our God is worth following. Our God is worth loving. He's a powerful God, a wonderful God, a miracle-working God. By the way, inside the congregation were some that had seen the miracle. Some had actually crossed the Red Sea. For example, Joshua had crossed the Red Sea. He'd seen the plagues in Egypt. They'd seen that. They'd seen the power of God. But there were also some there who hadn't seen everything that God had done in the past, as far as, you know, the plagues and the parting of the Red Sea, the destruction of the Egyptians. And we think about that. Uh, some of them had sort of gotten used to some of the blessings of God. Imagine uh, for 40 years you have water from a rock. I mean, after a while, you begin to take that. That's just normal for you. It's a water from a rock, and you forget that uh, God actually gave you that water from a rock. Uh, God providing food. Not, I mean, that, after a while, you get used to your food being there, manna from heaven, and you just it's there. It's just what happens. That just comes down from heaven every day. That's just normal. And you forget that that manna is from God. Amen. Amen. And these therefores. Therefore, God's been good to you. Therefore, love God. And that's where we're going to park a little bit today and the love of God. And you think about the love of God. Lo the love, love of God is found all over in the Bible. And specifically, it's, it's amazing, when you begin to study the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. It's full of commandments. Amen. By the way, it's interesting. Next week, we're going to look at the commandments. Therefore, you got to keep God's commandments. And I'm going to preach a message about, is it legalistic to keep God's commandments? Is it legalism to follow God's word? By the way, we have a world that begins to call you and I legalistic because we believe God's words ought to be followed. And I'm going to preach a legalistic message next week about legalism in the Bible. It's going to be interesting. At least I think it is. And, uh, but the book of Deuteronomy does give us commandments, 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 commandments. But go over with me to, and you're going to turn your Bibles probably a lot tonight. Go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. We quoted this earlier, but let's see it with our own eyes. And... Uh, you're going to have to turn is if you were in like fourth or fifth gear. Some of you don't know what gear shifting is, but that's back. Most cars back in the day weren't automatics. They had these things called gear shifters, and you'd have to go to first gear and second gear. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. 
Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The rest of it is, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And we think about it. We ought to love God. We ought to not love God a little bit. We ought to love God a lot with all thine heart. And, and all thy mind, all thy soul, and all, it's a, a lot of love right there. And, and we'll see this thread throughout the book of Deuteronomy to have a heart for God, a heart for God, a heart for God, a heart for God. By the way, you hear me uh, talk about the love of God. We ought to go to church because we love God. Amen. And this is so important. Some people go to church, but they have no love for God, and after a while, church wears off of them. Uh, you ought to read the Bible because you love God. You ought to tell people about Jesus because you love God. You ought to pray because you love God. You ought to have a Christian home because you love God. Uh, the love of God is such a vital important. We ought to have a love for God uh, that comes from our heart, and it's with all thine heart. Now, we continue on. I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, the next chapter there. And starting in verse 7, I'll start reading. It says, The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. Okay, now stop. God didn't love you because you were necessarily lovable. Not because you were a bunch of people or the strongest people. And matter of fact, you were the fewest of all people. Continue on, verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 9, look at this. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And there's some blessings, by the way. In other words, that's referencing a blessing for you loving God. By the way, I want to say there is a blessing for you loving God. There is some benefits to you loving God. Uh, you'll notice that throughout the Bible. When you love God, it's good for you. <laughs> it's good for you to love God. Now go on a little bit. Deuteronomy chapter 10, we, we read that. But go to Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13. Oh, fifth gear, almost fifth gear. Deuteronomy chapter 13. If, verse one, number one, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. By the way, stop right there. If there comes a prophet and all of a sudden he begins you a sign or wonder and that, that sign or wonder actually happens. Woo, did you see that? He must be a man of God. God, right? I mean, it obviously happened. Now, we get to there. It says, Wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. Now, the sign comes to pass, but he begins to point you to a different god, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. He's pointing you to a different god. Verse number three. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Amen. amen. I want to read that point again. I hopefully we rousingly said, Amen, 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 amen. I don't know if you'll say it like that, but it would be pretty cool if you did. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet. Y'all are speaking in tongues. That's not good. That's what has happened to our church. Or that dreamer of dreams. Now, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. If you begin to follow that man to another God, yeah, it's really showing you don't really love God. And that, that's important. You ought to love God so much that you don't follow that false prophet. By the way, there's a lot of false prophets in the world today. A lot. Uh, the world's full of them. Churches are full of them. Our nation is full of them. Uh, that don't point to the God of the Bible, but often point to the God of themselves and many other gods. And, and if you begin to go down that path, well, it's showing that you never loved God in the first place. You have no love of God. And it's so important, you should love God. Now go a little bit further, if you will. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 15. And uh, 30, verse number 15. I'll start reading, if you could catch up to me. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. By the way, that's good. Go to verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. 
By the way, I like those license plates that choose, say choose life. Amen. They're quoting the Bible, amen. And referencing the uh, atrocity of abortion because they ought to call that not abortion. They ought to call it not pro, uh, they're, they're pro-death. And I don't know how to word that any other way, but they're, they're not pro-life. Uh, but I like choose life, choose life. But you go a little bit further that both thou and thy seed may live. Verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of days. In other words, you got to love God. Love God. Choose the blessing. Amen. Choose that blessing. Choose life by loving God. Now we go a little bit further. Go to Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua chapter 22. And you look at this first part, we're going to get to verse number 5, but while you're turning there, Joshua is called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Nassus together. And then he gets to verse number 5. He's got these two and a half tribes there, uh, right there in front of him. He says in verse 5, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of God, charged you to love the Lord your God. <laughs> By the way, it's just funny. Uh, he gathers these two and a half tribes together and he encourages them to love God. He sort of looks out there and he says, love God. And I don't know if he said it exactly like that, but I mean, you can see him passionately saying, you know, what's gonna, I'm, I'm going to die very soon because Joshua was about to die, but he was encouraging to love God. We ought to love God. Go to the next chapter, chapter 23. This time he gathers all of the congregation of Israel together. And then it says in verse number 11, to this whole congregation of Israel, he says, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. And Joshua is continuing that. You ought to love God. Hey, love God. Uh, and he's referring, by the way, they could think back to the book of Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, where Moses had encouraged them over and over again to love God, love God, love God. Go over with me to the book of Psalms. Oh, the book of Psalms. Some of you just want to get to the love test. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But before we get there, Psalms chapter 116, and just say the first four words with me. I love the Lord. Let's say that again. I love the Lord. One more time. I love the Lord. And there's some reasons he loved the Lord, but I want to be able to say I love the Lord. Go to Psalm 145, verse number 20. Psalm 145, verse number 20. I'll read this. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. You know, we had one of those fly zappers. You ever seen those things? You push the button, you hit the fly, and it goes like that right there. I have zero love for any flies. I zap all flies. Amen. And, uh, but praise God, we're not flies. Uh, God preserves, preserves the people that love him. You love God, he's going to take care of you. Right. Amen. Right. And it's important to have a love for God. Uh, look at this, go a little bit further. We're going to go to the New Testament, the, the book of Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. New Testament starts with the book of Matthew. Matthew 22. Got to have to untangle some of those pages. They haven't been turned in a while. Matthew 22. Look at verse number 36 with me, if you will. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Reference back to the book of Deuteronomy. Love God, love God, love God. That's the great commandment. By the way, this is not a, this is not a suggestion. This is a command. Amen. And uh, one of my children recently, I said, go to bed. And he thought it was just a suggestion. <laughs> it was not a suggestion. It was a command. And, there's, and I spent time with him encouraging. You know, the Board of Education makes a seat of public opinion. <laughs> and uh, praise <laughs> Some of you will get that a little bit later. And so, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, but it's a command to love God. Love God. Now, we go to this one, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, I mean. 1 Corinthians 16. Verse number 
This is uh, interesting because what about people who do not love the Lord Jesus Christ? Love God. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22 says this. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, maranatha. Um, let, him be, um, let him be anathema. Let him be excommunicated almost, shunned. Uh, you could say it like this. One of my, my kids, we were in discussing banana bread this evening at the dinner table, and they began to say that they didn't like banana nut banana bread with walnuts in it. I, I couldn't understand it. I excommunicated them. <laughs> I shunned at them. I said, you need to get right with the Lord. Uh, I did not accept them. And uh, in other words, when somebody doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to shun that. I don't want to have any part of that. Uh, I don't want, I, I, by the way, we need people who love God in our church. And you know, when somebody comes to our church doesn't have a love for the Lord Jesus Christ, you ought to feel... You know, he has, obviously, we ought to share the love of Christ with him, but he, I hope he feels a little uncomfortable. Amen. Right. And I, I pray that he gets a, a, a little bit under conviction. We'll show him love. We're going to show him love, but he's not going to fit in here. And if we become a church that where only the people who love themselves fit in, we're going to have a problem. Amen. And all of a sudden, you become the Grace Baptist Temple, and you feel uncomfortable because you love Jesus. There's a problem here. Amen. 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 We want to be a church that's uh, the majority. We're saturated with people who have a love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says Maranatha. And what does that mean? It means, may the Lord come quickly and take vengeance on thee for thy crimes. In other words, let the Lord come and take care of this man who doesn't love him. Maranatha, let it come quickly and do it. Let the Lord, we don't seek vengeance on those people, but the Lord will. Amen. We go a little bit further here. I want you to, to go over to John, John chapter 21. We're almost there. We're in the New Testament. I'm going to quote from the Old Testament really quick, Psalm chapter 18. And it, it's very similar to one before, but it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. And uh, Psalm 18 is David. David just made a decision. He said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. And by the way, I think you should decide to love God. You have a desire to or make a choice to love the Lord right there. And you, you think about it real quick on that. I will love the, uh, I, I want to quote it right, I will love thee, O Lord. I talked to my dad yesterday in Colorado, and my dad has been on a diet. And he began to warn me about different foods. And he says, I, he began to say, uh, I no longer eat fast food. He said, I, I said, I won't eat McDonald's. I won't eat uh, Wendy's. I won't eat any. And then he said to me, he says, you know, I've lost 15 pounds I said, yeah, you have nothing good to eat. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but my dad would, was making a decision not to eat fast food. And that's okay. If you don't want to eat fast food, that's fine. I, I don't mind that. But one decision we should make is to love God. Amen. I will love thee, O Lord. We go over to John chapter 21, and this is Peter, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And, and you hear that question, lovest thou me more than these? And he did it a second time. In verse 17, he saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Now, that, that's interesting because could, Jesus, could you say to Jesus like Peter did? Could you, if you were standing face to face with Jesus, could you say, thou knowest that I love thee? That, that's very convicting. Could you look into the eyes of Jesus and say with a pure heart, Jesus, you know I love you. I love you, Jesus. And I hope my children, I, I hope my children know that I love them. I hope my wife knows that I love her. I do. I hope the people of this church know that I love you very, very much. Amen. But I really hope the Lord knows that I love him. And it's easy to say outwardly, but in truth, we all have to answer that inwardly to our God. And can you say truthfully to the Lord, Lord, you know that I love thee. That's, I'm serious. Think about it. Could you truthfully say that to God right now? Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Go to, uh, I'm going to skip over this one. Go to, oh, I can't skip over this. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. 
I'll read it, verse number 23. If you don't get there, it's okay. And it says these words, Oh, love the Lord, all ye His saints. Oh, love the Lord, all ye His saints. And this is a psalm of David, and David is encouraging his people to love the Lord. You can almost see David, Oh, love the Lord, all ye His saints. Oh, love the Lord, all ye saints. David encouraged people to love the Lord. He almost begged them to love the Lord. It was like I was in Italy. I already had two umbrellas, and they had all these umbrella people stationed all throughout Rome trying to sell me an umbrella. And I already had two umbrellas, and this guy came up and he started begging me to buy another umbrella. I didn't need another umbrella. But you know what I did? After he begged me and begged me, you know what? I bought another umbrella. But, but think about that. David's in begging these saints, begging you and me to love God. And I thought about this. If you love God, you ought to beg other people to love God. Uh, mom and dad, beg your children to love God. Amen. Pastor, beg the congregation to love God. We go soul winning, and then we should have, almost beg people to love God. Amen? And it's important for us, with a heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and it's important for us to have a heart for God. Now, we think about that. Why? why I'm not going to go there. Go, turn over to 1 John chapter 4. This is the love test. 1 John. Did I say 1 John? 1 John chapter 4. And as you're turning there, remember in Deuteronomy chapter 11, why should we love him? There, there are some great notes right here um, about loving God, therefore love God. But it says, Know ye this day, I speak not with your children which have not known. This is Deuteronomy chapter 11, which have seen the chastisement of the Lord as God, his greatness, his mighty hand, his stretch out. We ought to love God for a lot of different things. Eventually read Deuteronomy chapter 11. It continues why we ought to love him. But why, uh, why do we love God? In verse number 19, we're going to go forward and then we're going to backtrack. Verse number 19, we love him because he first loved us. Yes. Say that with me. We love him because he first loved us. Two more times. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Now here's the love test. Go to chapter uh, 4 there in verse number 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God. By the way, not here in his love, not that we love God. Okay, you're going to notice, if, if you can hold your finger right there, go to the last verse right there, verse number 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. You're, you're going to understand the context of the love test, right? The love test. It's going to be mentioning us loving our brethren. It's not trying to dissuade you from, saying, uh, from your love of God. But it's saying, it's one thing to say you love God, but here's proof that you do. Okay? There's one thing to say, I love God. Amen. We can put a bumper sticker on the back of your bumper that says, I love Jesus. And everybody will look and say, hey, that guy loves Jesus. But there's a difference between putting a bumper sticker on the back of your bumper and actually loving the Lord. So the test right here says, if you love God, here's some proof that you do. You understand that? So we go back to verse number 10. Go back to here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Verse 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may, be bo uh, may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so we are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out all out, cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? I, I should read that again. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, if a man say, I love God, if a man put a bumper sticker on the back of his car that says, I love Jesus and hateth his brother, he's a liar. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is, now I want you to put those bumper stickers back there. <laughs> I do. I like those bumper stickers. Amen. But the main point is the love of God. I want to love God. And the love of God, the test of loving God is to have a love for your brother. I'm going to read verse 20 again. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Read verse 21 with me. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. First commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Second commandment is like it, love thy neighbor as thyself. You can say you love God, but if you don't love your neighbor, question your love of God. And that's what that chapter is all about. The test of your love of God is do you love your neighbor? Do you love people? And you know, when, when we have uh, people that hate, hate other people, ye, I think they got a love of God problem. Yes, sir. Right. I think they got a love of God problem. Right. And I think we ought to have a love of God. It's, it's throughout, it's commanded, amen. amen. Therefore, love God. And we see it through the book of John. Deuteron- we see it all over the Bible right there. But have a love for God. Choose to have a love for God. There's benefits, blessings to a love of God. But what ends up, how do you know if you love God? Well, if you have a love for your neighbor, you have a love for people. And really work on your, your love for God. Amen? Amen. Oh, next week, uh, keeping the commandments. Is it legalistic? And praise the Lord, that's going to be good. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we do love you, Lord.